What's up guys, welcome to another video. Uh, it's been a very long time since I did the last one. Uh, just to give you a bit of an explanation of why I've been away. Um, so I was sick maybe a couple of weeks ago. And I mean, I got better, but I still had this lingering cough. And um, it took me a very, quite a while to get rid of it. And yeah, so the reason is like, I didn't want the cough to like interrupt me while I'm like recording and talking right so that's why I haven't been recording uh, for the past couple or for quite a while actually and um, and also um, haven't I haven't been streaming either um, but I've, I've recovered now for the most part so um, I'll be doing I'll be trying to record stuff again or at least once I like you know find content to talk about um, so yeah so with this video we're going to be talking or I'm going to show you my siege teams or at least, at least most of them um, you, you probably saw earlier um, when, at the monster count at the start uh, it was 24 out of 30 right or which means like 24 after you take away these three units that I'm using at the moment so that means there was one team that I didn't record which was a it was just a simple Lucian team so you didn't really miss, you didn't really miss out much on it but uh, that was what I used for the first fight um, now, as far as recording Siege is concerned, um, I I won't be re uh, recording it that often, or I can't really record it uh, very often at all. The reason is because Siege is on while I'm at work, right? Um, so for my time, uh, it starts from, well currently it starts from 7am to 7pm. So you can imagine it's like really w awkward timing for me, I can't record you know, during that time, and it's on like Tuesday and Friday for me, um, and it's gonna it will just get worse once um, uh, daylight savings changes because uh, Australia will go one one way and America will go the opposite way, so it's like a two hour difference eventually. So that will mean once the daylight saving changes occurs for both countries, I'm, I'm, it's gonna be uh, five a.m start for me and then it will end at 5 p.m. so that's gonna be even worse when that happens um, but currently I'm on a Christmas break for two weeks or two and a half weeks so I'll be able to record a few sieges at least um, I think by the, by the time I do that it will probably like I'll probably exhaust all my teams and you'll, you'll see like all the combinations I use currently anyway um, so by then it should be fine I think but anyway um, so that, that, that's just an explanation on like, you know, how often you'll see Siege. So you probably see it for like a few videos worth of it and then it's going to be quite a while. Pretty much like only when if I have a holiday, like, oh sorry, a public holiday or um, maybe if I'm sick I might record and then like do the voiceover later. So I guess that's the, I okay, guess also to explain how this video is done. Um, so I recorded everything and then I edited all the like uh, the footage to cut out like the unnecessary stuff. Like there's, there's a lot of time spent like you know looking at all the towers and stuff and picking my teams. So I got rid of all that so that the video is not too long. Um, and yeah, the first couple of teams were pretty standard teams. You've probably seen me use in Guild Wars like, already a lot. You can transfer a lot of the Guild War teams to. Uh, siege like if you have a lot of the common teams you should be able to at least build like you know five to six teams you can do like a copper bulldozer team you can do a Lucian team Tessa Fio is like a very common one too um, and then you, you probably have uh, like Kali as a, available as well maybe even a Katarina team there's quite a lot of like common attackers that you can use um, and you probably have like your usual like Wombo teams as well. You might even have multiple Lucian teams. Like for example, this one is a is a secondary Lucian team. I use I'm using one of my speed Lucians instead because I only have one slow Lucian. I, I don't I I don't I can't really be bothered to move all the runes around because I feel it's a bit wasteful and also um, I don't know it just didn't seem very, like a like much point to me. Now, uh, just to explain what happened in this fight, um, I underestimated how fast this Celia would be. I thought that my Dover should outspeed her. My Dover's pretty decently fast. It's not super fast, about like I think it's like plus 
170 or something speed um, or something like that anyway um, so what happened was the Celia just so happened to target my Lucian and I reduced his health and therefore Dover uh, because of like the way his passive works he gave him it gave my Lucian a heal over time instead of uh, an attack buff so if I was at full health the Lucian would have got an attack buff and it basically it would function similar to how a, a Kona Mia would work um, so yeah, I had to do like a buffless amp, but it, it, it just like, it was an, like enough like for Sierra to finish. It was very really lucky I brought Sierra to help finish off that team. Um, now this team, um, this is a team that one of my guildies uses. Uh, I learned it from her, um, and I think it's quite a, it's like a a decent team against these sort of mid-range teams that don't have immunity. So by mid range, I mean like they don't have a lot of burst damage, um, apart from maybe Perna. But the good, the the thing about the, this Molon Perna team is against triple win, the Molon obviously has to hit win, but it's a very low chance of heal armor break, right? Because he's got he can glance. Um, so you're generally pretty safe from that. Although my Sierra did get like, get armor broken, but at least with Sierra, if she has a bomb up, bomb ups, she can. Um, remove the armor break by getting you know an additional turn um, also it doesn't really matter if they take out one of my like or either Sierra or Gany because because um, Eladriel can revive right and if Eladriel gets targeted it's fine because he's the most tanky unit I just don't I, I just don't want Molong to reckless assault as well on, on, on Eladriel so this team is not 100% safe but it's like one of my like secondary op options when I don't have my safe team available because obviously there's a lot of Molong defenses especially at the top uh, rankings right and we need multiple ways to deal with them so uh, this is one of my like teams that I can use against it but it's not 100% definitely not like it's not that safe I think because of the cracker this, it's a little bit easier against this team um, just because she's usually more like supportive, whereas like Retesh can do a bit of damage. Uh, probably against Eladriel, it's probably the, like the um, the easiest version to do, deal with because uh, your Gany can keep resetting the Eladriel, and then the Eladriel doesn't really do much unless he violent procs a lot. Um, but anyway, uh, this is my other like well, this is my main go-to team against the Molong Perna team. I use this all the time in Guild Wars. Right. Then, uh, just speaking of that, this is partially why I don't record Guild Wars any anymore. Is because I pretty much just use two teams against most people, uh, which is this team, my Wind Panda team, and my Tesla Fear team. They're my, like, you know, my go-to teams, safe teams as well. Um, apart from those two, like all I really do is either Lucian or Copper. That's like they're usually the other alternatives. And sometimes I might do like. Uh, the, the Chroma team against Sierra teams or against certain Sierra teams I might do like um, like a Fire Monkey uh, sorry not Fire Monkey uh, Raccoonie team um, so pretty much like there's not much variation for my Guild War team so I don't really bother to record it anymore I don't feel like it's really worth like doing it <clears throat> now I'm a bit unlucky here in that my my Mihail got defense broken and she didn't violent proc out of it so Perna is going to hit it which is very awkward you'll soon see because then the, the Molong still has quite a lot of HP right and now like she's very low HP right and she's in range to die to the reckless assault and she's not going to get her turn beforehand so you can see she's straight out dies to that now so this makes it very difficult for me because I don't have defense buff anymore and I can't reset the Eladriel right uh, I tried, I, I, you know, that, that barely didn't kill, you know, that Eladriel. If I, if I killed the Eladriel, it would have been perfectly fine because it's just a Molong left. But, um, he was very fortunate in, in that he, actually he violent procced and then revived and then violent procced and again and healed. So it was like a, like a three turn turn, but you know, come on, I can't really do much about that. Um, but I still have a chance here, all I have to do is make sure I kill the Eladriel so that there's no more heals and revive. Once those two are down, my Winda and Wusa can easily kill the other two, right? Because 
Uh, the Molong should hopefully not get topped up anymore. He can reckless assault, but like it doesn't kill, which is very like you know very fortunate. Uh, so Wu's just ha hanging on by the string, like you know the skin of his teeth. Um, luckily, the parent is not switching to the the Wusa. Sometimes I do notice he like the parent will switch to a water unit, even though there's a wind unit there. Uh, but luckily, it, it didn't do it here. And uh, you can see, it, like that was a perfect opportunity for Perna to kill it. And if it was a probably like if it was a Field Mars, the Field Mars would be dead for sure, right? I, I always see Perna switch to Field Mars, but for some reason it didn't go for the Wusa here. So I decided to heal up the um, the, the Wusa. It's very close though. You can see the the, the uh, Water Panda just missed killing it. If if I if I had lost the Wusa there, uh, I'm not sure like how it would go. It'd be pretty close because the Molong still has uh, Reckless Assault up and he's got like enough HP to use it so yeah now a way to make sure or to keep the Molongs under control is try to reduce the health I know it's very self-explanatory but the AI is smart enough that it won't use Reckless Assault uh, if it's on too low health unless it can kill something right if it knows it can kill something it will switch like it will do that all right, so this is one of my Nat Four teams, my pretty much my go-to team. Um, I don't hit that many Nat Four teams cause, just because I don't have that many options. It's like this team, maybe Lucian, but a lot of teams aren't Lucianable because there's so many like Garros and stuff on defense, um, and I guess like Copper Bulldozers is my other go-to team. Um, sometimes I also use things like Jutan to tank, uh, like light dps units there are some light dps units like mimir some people use darian like those sort of units the drew like can tank those and you know send the damage back to them too um but anyway uh with this team i i sync my ludo to my garo they're like one speed apart and and the ludo is the defense breaker he's not 100 percent reliable but he can do it all right um And I use this, uh, I can use this against most, like, quite a lot of the teams. I probably wouldn't use it against Garo, even though I probably can, because the Ludo can finish it off, but it's not that safe. But against Garo teams, I usually, first thing I go for is Stella. I think the most common uh, counters to Garo is Stella and Julie. Uh, mostly because Garo has very low HP, right? And most people don't build him, like, you know, tanky because. Because of his passive, and two, because his base health is so low, so you may as well just make him YOLO. Now you could see there, I went straight for the the Garrow with no attack buff, no defense break. Right? Obviously, if I had those, it would do more damage, but you don't need that much to kill the Garrow. You just need to be able to multi hit it, right, and do enough damage to kill it in that one hit, or uh, in that one lot of multi hits, I should say. Um, Okay, and then the same thing for Rina. Um, as long as I have a defense break, Stella can easily kill her. Uh, with attack buff and defense break, I think I've seen my Stella do a, about 80k total, or se like between 70, 70 to 80k. Um, it's about like 11k per uh, hit, I think, from memory. And uh, she has 7 hits, so she can pretty much one shot anything with third skill. And her second skill does pretty decent damage too. Second skill can also kill Garo because it's a multi-hit. <clears throat> um, and next up we have uh, this one. I sort of had to, had to like, be a bit more creative here. I don't normally use this sort of offense, but it can work against certain teams that don't have a, uh, a win threat because obviously uh, I can't glance against any of these. So it's very easy to keep them under control with two units that can CC. Well, actually, technically, there's three units I can CC because Iris has Despair. Um, I was very lucky here as well. Um, you could see the the, the Molong Reckless Assault at the Poseidon, and the Chandra Valen procked out and did Trick of Water, right? And that almost killed my Poseidon. Uh, if, I, if I had lost the Poseidon, I probably would have lost. Um, but yeah, from here, I can kind of take my time. I just have to keep the better under control, just keep it silent or stunned. Uh, to stop her from doing the immunity. I think eventually, like, you expect her to eventually violent proc out and do the buff, 
but you know, uh, as long as you can delay it as long as you can, then it's fine. Plus, Iris has always has a constant strip, so like you know, worst case scenario, I can just like go for that that strip, and I pretty much just like you pretty much just slowly poke them down. Um, now I have other teams that I sometimes use, which you won't be able to see because it's limited to nine or ten hits. But I recorded nine of them. Uh, some of the other teams I might use is like Sierra or Ryan Perna against some teams. Um, what else do I use? Um, I also have another uh, Molong counter, which is Wind Monkey Harmonia Aerial. So the idea with that team is uh, Molong will go for. Um, the harmonia with reckless assault turn one right and i put my harmonia on nemesis so that she will cut in and then do her third skill to swap the health around um ariel can be a backup healer and then the monkey king will like you know uh kill off the the uh the molong it's probably like that team is best against the retesh version obviously if i bring it against the eladriel version it's harder because I have to rely on destroying the HP eventually because the the Eladriel can revive the Molong and it takes a while to kill the Molong again. So it's better against the retesh version where I, and then I can use the uh, the Winder version against um, the the Eladriel uh, version of the Molong defense. Um, let's see. I think those are, like from memory those are like, the main defense that I use and then I I. Um, Oh, I can also use like Katarina with Jemaya. Uh That one I use against like the water wind heavy teams that don't have strip, uh, which is not that common. But there are some like that. Like for example, Eladriel Chasun Fieldmans is like a not that common, but it, it's around, right? Because because building ten defense is very hard. You have you have to like build some defenses which are like I guess technically normally they're like easily to wombo but there's only so many wombos you can use right like you can only use like well for me like this for example i can only use jamaya katarina once so you know as long as like if if, if you draw them out early then you can place the team again and force them to maybe try something else like you know like bruiser or something all right so that's pretty much all i had for this video so Thanks guys for watching and I hope I see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!